What's happening guys? Today we're going to be touching on keyword research and how to find all your relevant high search volume keywords that you want to rank your Amazon listing for. You want to solidify that listing in the search results on Amazon for certain keywords that your customers are typing in in order to find your type of product and purchase your type of product. Today we're going to be focusing on Magnet from Helium 10. So you can see Magnet on screen here. And another thing I wanted to touch on is this is a series of all different Helium 10 tools. So if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe below. You can see all those different sessions on different parts of Helium 10 if you're considering a kind of all-in-one Amazon research tool. But with Magnet, here you can find it third in the drop-down list on your Helium 10 dashboard. And how we're going to use this is we're going to input a keyword. So using our example product from the last session, we are going to be using this anemometer or wind speed monitor. So what we're going to do is actually take our most relevant shortest possible search term. You're usually going to find that in all your top competitor titles. We are going to take that and that is what's going to be our starting point here. It's going to be our keyword that we start the search in Magnet with. So we just paste it in and say get keywords. Now one other thing while this loads up is make sure you're obviously on your correct marketplace that you're searching for. In this case we're doing the US and it's brought up some specific data points I'll quickly touch on. First, this block tells you exactly the search volume, CPR 8 day giveaway, match type and magnet IQ score for your seed keyword. That is the first keyword we put in, anemometer. We can see our search volume, very healthy, four and a half thousand searches per month. We have a CPR eight day giveaway of 104. So you'd have to give away 104 units or sell 104 units in eight days in order to rank on page one for anemometer for this keyword. And then match type, organic and smart complete. And there's one other which is Amazon recommended. But this keyword specifically is organic. That means customers type this in themselves on Amazon quite frequently also smart complete so this is something that helium 10 is picking up off of other similar keywords magnet iq score is very high in this instance over 8000 what the magnet iq score is is a ratio between how much search volume does this keyword have versus how many competing products are competing on that keyword to make sales for that keyword and the better that ratio for you, the more opportunity for you. In other words, the higher search volume to lower competition, the better that ratio is, is going to result in a higher magnet IQ score. So a higher magnet IQ score is always better than a lower magnet IQ score. In this block, you see distribution. This tells you your total keywords that it's pulled up off of our starting keyword. It's found 1,630 possibly related keywords to that that we're going to go through smart complete so of these 1600 keywords how many of them are smart complete that is helium 10's autocomplete type of feature so this is a bit smarter than amazon's autocomplete it can find keywords before your keyword after your keyword it can even find keywords which don't actually have your keyword in them so it's a little bit more clever then we have organic keywords over here, which is what people organically type in to Amazon regularly. Amazon recommended, which is keywords Amazon recommends off of this keyword and related search terms according to their algorithms. Then top products. This is going to be much more important later, but we can click through to each of these and do a Cerebro search on those. That's a reverse ASIN search, but I'm going to do a second video on that following this one. Word frequency is going to tell you your individual words and how often those come up on listings that are ranking for this keyword. So to get more into our results, why we're actually here, we have a magnet IQ score filter here. Leave that blank for now. Search volume. This is going to be key, and we're going to touch on this a little more. You can set a minimum or maximum search volume. So I only want to see keywords that are searched at least 300 times per month. 
you can set that as a minimum. Word count is very important. The default is two. That means it's only going to show you key phrases and search terms down here that have at least two words in them. This is a problem in our current market with keywords like anemometer. That's one word. So we definitely want to see one word. So we're going to change this to a minimum of one instead of two. Competing products. Leave this blank for now and match type. Leave this blank for now too. You can see you can choose based on those filters we discussed. And then Amazon's choice. Leave that out. So the most important is going to be search volume, depending on how many keywords you get through. So you can see we got 1500 keywords here. So the goal of this is to find our top 50 keywords that we're really going to focus on infusing into the listing and also using in PPC ads later. But to go through 1500 keywords is going to be a tedious task. So what you can start to do is actually filter by search volume because we're looking for our highest search volume, most relevant 50 keywords. So what we can do here is filter the search volume a little bit and only see the highest search volume keywords. So in this case, I'm going to put a minimum search volume of 250 searches per month for one word keywords as well and above and apply. You can see it's brought this number all the way down to 236, which is going to be much easier to move through. But just keep in mind, if you're in a really niche market, then filtering by 250 might be too aggressive. And then you only have, say, 30 keywords left here, which is going to be a problem. So I recommend you keep it more open to start and, and then filter down if you still have too many. So in more competitive markets, you can go higher. You could even have a minimum of 750 search volume here. But in more niche markets, you might go lower, even 100. Or maybe you just don't have too many keywords when you pull this up. Maybe it's a manageable number, but it's got to be something you can work through. Now we actually have some keywords here and we want to filter these by search volume high to low. And once we do that, it's going to bring up the highest search volume first, as you can see. And now it's our job to check relevancy of these keywords. We know they super high search volume. Now we got to make sure they're relevant to our actual product. If someone typed us in, would they purchase our product? Would they possibly be looking for our product? If not, then we remove them. So you can see here weather station, the first one. Now that's actually a different product. It's like a tablet type product that shows you all the weather, the humidity, wind speed, etc. Now, although we are not selling a weather station, our wind speed monitor might be able to plug in to a weather station. So we're going to keep that as a complementary product. We could rank for weather station or even use that as a product targeting keyword, show up on weather station listings and actually make sales there. So we're going to keep that keyword. We might have something in the listing like wind speed meter for weather station, etc. So I'm going to keep that because it's still relevant. We could still see sales from this type of keyword. You can see Air Max here. This is not relevant. We'll remove that. Weather stations, wireless, indoor, outdoor. We'll keep that. Weather, that's too broad and we will have that in other phrases anyway with keyword hinging when you have multiple keywords in one keyword key phrase. HP computer, definitely not relevant. Wind turbine, definitely not. Outdoor thermometer, that may well be important because this is a thermometer, but it does also measure wind speed. Anemometer, this is our main keyword actually. And we can see we've got a very high search volume as well. Four and a half thousand searches a month. And keep in mind, it's quite niche. Most people will not know what an anemometer is. I don't even know if I'm actually pronouncing that correctly. Light meter, we can remove. Decibel meter, remove. Surfing, remove. Manometer, I'm not sure. Maybe this is a misspell. That would be very important if it is a misspell. Wind. We are going to have that in keyword hinging with other keywords anyway. Sailing, here again, it becomes important because people might use our product for sailing. So we're going to keep that. Altimeter, unless it measures altitude, no. And so on. And you're going to move through this list 
and you're going to be left with your top 50. But you can see how we've removed quite a lot already. And that's why you don't want to have your top number over here be too low because you're not going to be able to get your top 50. So now you're going to have your top 50 keywords in here. Another thing I want to touch on are these columns. We've touched on a few of them, but I want to show you how you can use them to narrow down keywords. Magnet IQ score, remember, that is a metric that shows you the ratio or the opportunity between search volume and competing products. The higher the search volume and lower the competing products, that relationship, the higher your magnet IQ score is, the better it is for you. So you can see like this long tail keyword has a very high magnet IQ score because it has fewer listings ranking for that. Fewer listings are using that. You can see there less than a thousand competing and our search volume is really high, almost 20,000 searches a month for that long tail. So very, very strong keyword. And that's how magnet can help you above some other tools I've used in terms of looking at those relationships and choosing the best niche keywords uh, based on the current market. We also have the ability to look at the number of sponsored ASINs on that keyword, the headline search ASINs, the very top advert on Amazon, the competing products, and then CPR eight-day giveaways. Remember how many units you need to give away to rank on page one for this keyword in eight days. And then match type. Is it organic, Amazon recommended, or smart autocomplete, or all three? It can be multiple at the same time. So one conclusion you can draw from the columns is that if you're stuck between two keywords for any reason, your next reference point should be magnet IQ score and choosing the keyword with the higher magnet IQ score. For example, if you're not sure if this, if keyword A or keyword B should go in the title, they have the same relevancy and search volume, then you look at magnet IQ score to make that call. Last thing I want to touch on is advanced filters. Here, you can choose to show phrases that contain a certain keyword. So say we find a specific type of this product that we only want to see keywords for, we can put that keyword in here or multiple keywords in here and then choose whether this tool shows up results or other keywords that contain all of the keywords we've put in here or any of the keywords we've put in here. So most of the time you're going to be choosing any when using that, but I don't think you'll be using this often. What I think you will use more often is this one exclude phrases that contain. This is important because if you're searching a niche, which is giving you a whole lot of keywords that you don't actually want to see, you can then put in a phrase here that you wish to exclude. And then once you apply that, it's not going to show you keywords that have that phrase or keyword in it, making it much more targeted for you. So once we have our top 50 list here, super high volume, super relevant, we can then export this to CSV or Excel and you want to store that and make that ready for keyword inclusion on the listing as we build that listing out. Another thing we will do later is export this directly to Frankenstein. This is something Helium 10 does really well in terms of connecting and interlinking its different tools so you can use one and export to the other instantaneously. So that we'll be covering in a different session as well. For now, you want those top 50 keywords all in a nice neat list ready to be used on your listing. I hope this video helped you understand Magnet a little bit more as well as the concepts behind keyword research and how you can extract your very, very best keywords, get them onto your listing and then rank for them in order to make sales and in order for your customers to be able to find your listings. If you did get value from the video, please do like it below and subscribe to the channel. That way you're gonna be able to see all the follow-ups to the session and stay in the loop. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.